my laptop doesn't have a number pad on the side like a full-size keyboard or full-size laptop would have. A number pad on the side makes typing in numbers easier, and for some video editing programs like Blender or 3D CAD programs, it specifically needs the number pad on the side to rotate the camera angle and using the numbers up here won't work. So here's everything you need to create a Arduino number pad. I'm using the Nextian display because it is very easy to make the GUI with the Nextian editor. You just make it on the computer and then you can upload it onto the screen and it's exactly how you made it on the computer. You will also need a micro SD card to load the TFT file from the computer to the Nextian display. You will need an Arduino with the Atmega 32U4 chip on it. Here I have the Arduino Pro Micro, but any board with the Atmega 32U4 like the Yun and the Leonardo series will work. And finally, you'll need a micro USB cable to connect your Arduino to the computer. So if you want to make this project, I've left a link to all the files you need in the description. Now the first thing I did was go ahead and look up a nice keypad picture on Google Images. I like this one and I saved it and the only thing I didn't like is that I wanted the background to be black. So we're gonna have to do some photo manipulation in GIMP and we'll go to that now. So here we are in GIMP and we're gonna want to go create a new project and since the screen is going to be vertical I know the width of my screen is 320 pixels and the height is 480 pixels so I'll go ahead and create that and we'll go ahead and set the color to black take the fill tool click it and now we have a black background to work on. Then I'll go to File and click Open as Layers and I'll just open up the picture I want to use. And as you can see, it is too big for what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on it, go to Scale Layer and I'll scale the width down to 320, which is what our size is. And as you can see, we have some area on the top and the bottom that is not filled with the picture because this picture is not exactly the 320 by 480 aspect ratio that we're looking for. So I'm going to come over to the scale tool, click on the picture, and I'll just stretch it out a bit until it fits exactly the size of the screen. Click enter. And now I want to invert these colors. I want a black background. So the easiest way to do that is to just come up to the colors tab and click invert and now it's inverted so this is exactly what we want for what it, we want the screen to look like when a button's not being pressed so i'll go to file export as and then i can save this but now we need to make what it will look like when the button is being pressed so what i'll do is i'll duplicate this layer by right clicking on it and clicking duplicate and i can turn off the visibility of the old one we don't need that anymore I will select the fill tool and I'll select the color to be, that looks about good. And I'll just start clicking each of the buttons inside there and just fill it with the gray color. Now as you can see some areas are not connected to the area that I was filling so they remain the original color. So I'll just go ahead and click on those. And now I'll just do the same thing and export this. So here we are in the Nextian editor. Uh, we're going to create a new project and select which model we have. In my case, I have the enhanced 3.5 version and we want it in the vertical orientation. So we'll just click okay. Initially, we'll come over here and we'll just say dims equals 50, which will set the screen brightness at 50%. And I think that's a pretty good brightness for both day and nighttime viewing. That way we don't have to put any sort of light sensor on to change uh, depending on the lighting of the room. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add the two pictures that we had. Here the two pictures I saved are Nums and Nums Gray. So I'll just highlight both of those, open them, hit OK, and here they are. So coming over and clicking on this, we want to set the background to an image and we'll choose the picture as this one. And now it's set this as the background. What we want to do now is we're going to create a new button and I'm gonna drag it to approximately the size of the button. 
I want it to be a little bit greater than because there's there's plenty of space here so we can make it a little bit bigger. Same thing as we did with the background, we're going to change this to a crop image this time because we want it to change to a different image. That way it'll let us pick two pictures. So for the first one, which will be the unpressed, is just going to be the background. And for the pressed image, we're going to make it the gray one. So now we also need to clear the text out of here. Otherwise, it's not going to like that we haven't imported font zero because it doesn't exist. And now it should be ready to work this button. So we'll go up to debug and we'll click on it. And you can see that it changes the color when we click on it. So the other thing we want to do is when it releases the button, we want it to send the component ID to the Arduino. And then all you have to do is just control C, control V and just keep copying pasting these buttons over all of them. So now we have all the buttons placed over their proper location. And if I go up to debug, we can run it and we can click all of them. As you can see, it is sending the component ID when I release and all the buttons turn gray like they're supposed to. So then we'll come over, we'll click compile. So if we come over to that, this is where all of your .tft files go. So here's the one for my file, numpad. So I'll just hit control C. Then I'll insert the micro SD card into the computer. And we need to make sure there is only one file on the SD card. So you're gonna wanna delete everything else. So to upload the TFT file onto your Nextgen display, you're going to take the micro SD card and put it into the micro SD card slot. Then you need to power cycle the screen. Here I have it plugged into the adapter that comes with it, but you could also power it from the Arduino if you want. So as soon as I plug in the cable, you'll see it starts updating. Once it's done, you can take out the micro SD card and unplug the cable and plug it back in again and now it'll start up with the HDMI you created. As you can see everything reacts as normal just like it did on the computer. So the first thing you need to do is import the keyboard library. On SparkFun's website they say you don't need to do this but I always get an error if I don't include the keyboard library so yeah, I just include it. Uh, you also need to include the nexian.h file. So this line right here sets up the software serial on pins 8 and 9. So this block here is where you declare all of the buttons. So as you can see we can set the name of the button and and these three parameters right here are the page that the button is on, the ID of the button, and then the name of the button from the Nextian editor. The next thing we do is create this list of touch events. Here are all the button names that we previously set right there. These need to be exactly the same as here. So here are all the methods for what we want it to do when a button gets pressed. This word right here has to be the name of the button as well. You can't just put anything here. It has to be the button name. So this is a pop callback, which means when the button is released, then it does whatever's in here. Since this is the nine button, we do keyboard.write nine, and that's going to use the Arduino to send the nine character through the USB cable to the computer. And we just do the exact same thing for all the rest of the numbers, except for the backspace. The backspace is a little different. Uh, since it's not a character that we can just, you know, put quotations on, we have to use this command right here, which is key underscore backspace. And instead of writing it, we press it. And then since we've pressed it, what this does is it keeps the button pressed. We have to release it immediately. So we're just gonna do keyboard dot release all for that. Then we take all our buttons here and we attach the pop and this is where we put the name of all these methods in here and then the only thing in the loop function really is this listening loop all this does is go through and it listens for any touch events and that's all of the code it's pretty simple as far as the circuit goes all you need to is hook up the four wires from the nextian to the arduino so we have ground to ground the red wire to vcc on the arduino and since we set up the software serial as pins eight and nine we have the blue wire on 8 and the yellow wire on 9. So now I've opened up the notepad on the screen over here. Here we have it running. And as you can see, if I press the numbers, it starts typing it into the notepad.
So of course you can make this do whatever you want. You can make a full keyboard. I personally think the screen is a little too small to make a full keyboard, but uh, Nextian sells up to seven inch screen. So you could absolutely do that. You could also make it as a mouse. You could add an accelerometer for moving the mouse around. The possibilities are pretty much limitless. And of course, if you have access to a 3D printer, you can also create an enclosure for this whole thing make it look a bit nicer. Now this whole setup costs about 35 bucks depending where you get your parts from. So for the price, it's a really fun and customizable project to do. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and subscribe, leave a like, comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one.